What if you never had to worry about another client leaving your fitness program again because you knew the tools to tap into something much deeper into your clients and turn your fitness program into an addiction that they couldn't give up even if they wanted to? Today, we're going to talk about the advanced psychology of client retention and how to tap into the six human needs in your fitness program to make sure clients never want to leave. So what are the six human needs? The six human needs are the human needs that drive all of our consumer behavior. This was outlined by Tony Robbins. Now, no matter what you feel about the guy, Tony Robbins, personally or professionally, you have to pay attention to the six human needs that he's created. Now, this was adapted from you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is the human need for safety and security and social structure. And it's been adapted to more consumer social behavior. It's incredibly powerful when you adapt it to your fitness program at any level, whether you are a personal trainer or you have your own gym already. Here's the six human needs. I'm going to give you an outline and then I'm going to explain how you can use these in your fitness program with tools at your disposal, as well as just the inherent nature of fitness in general. So the six human needs are outlined as so. You have the human need for certainty. So the need to understand what is going to be happening in the world around you for safety and security. You also have the need for uncertainty. So the need for surprise or variety in your life. You have the need for significance. So the need to feel significant in the world, to be known. You have the need for love and connection, which is a little bit deeper then significance a little more meaningful. You have the need for a true feeling of love and connection with the people around you. And then finally, the deepest and most powerful needs are the need for growth, that you are physically growing and expanding in the world, and the need for contribution, the need to feel like you are contributing to the greater good. So all of these six human needs are the way that we interact with the world. We're striving to fill one or more of these needs whenever we go out and participate in a business, in a fitness program, or show up to work in any capacity. How can you use your fitness program to tap into these needs? Now, there's something really important to note here. They say that if any behavior taps three or more needs in one single source, it becomes an addiction. Now, when you think of addictive behaviors, I'm not just talking about drugs and alcohol and other addictive substances, which actually physically alter the chemicals in your brain. I'm talking about the behaviors like exercise, like becoming a workaholic, like being addicted to social media that tap multiple needs in people, like the need for significance, such as social media. When you tap multiple needs, it becomes an addictive force and something that you feel compelled to continue doing. So how can you use this force for good good in your fitness program. Now, it's important to remember that using really powerful tools and tactics like this should be used for good because in the wrong hands, it can be perverted into something you know more negative or more uh, manipulative. But in fitness, we are fortunate enough to know that our product is serving a greater good. So using tools like this, we can do so in a way that's productive and positive for the world. So let's talk about how fitness already meets a lot of these needs inherently. Just somebody going to work out on their own or coming to your gym, you don't even have to try and you're meeting the need for certainty. Let's outline how you are already checking a lot of these boxes and then how you can turn this into a superpower. The first way is with certainty, everybody knows and they're pretty certain when they go to work out, they're going to get a sweat, they're going to raise their heart rate, they're going to improve their health in some capacity. There's also the need that is met with growth. Everybody knows inherently that coming to work out, they are growing in a physical manner. They're improving their health and they're growing by improving that health. Maybe in some other ways, the need for uncertainty is met because you don't know who is going to be at the gym. You don't know what the workout is going to be, but we're going to talk about how you can level that up in your program. Now that you know that your workout program in general has at least two needs being met completely inherently. How can we take this and completely level it up? So think about your fitness program for a minute. Think about the experiences and things that you can provide your clients that tap into these needs. And we're going to start at the top. So the need for certainty. Think about what is going through your client's head as they're driving to the gym every day or as they're driving to meet you for the first time. They're probably a little bit concerned about what they're walking into, what type of gym this is, what type of workout it is, what you look like. That was a big challenge for me because when people would walk in and I was dealing with moms and dads that were 
you know, not typical gym people. And, you know, I used to have a shaved head and I used to be a lot like bigger and stronger and more intimidating looking. I needed them to know what they were walking into because it was definitely kind of off-putting the first time they met me because they would look at me and they would say, I don't want to do whatever you're doing because you're really scary looking. I had to do everything I could to meet the need for certainty so that they knew what they were walking into. One of the tools at your disposal is video and text message. So as a client, maybe coming to the gym for the first time to meet you, you could take a selfie video and say, hey, just wanted to put a face to the name. Here's what the gym looks like. Here's what you're walking into. Don't worry. There's not going to be a session going on. It's just going to be a private session with me and you. So, you know, that is a way that you can meet the need for certainty in a very uncertain moment in the prospect's journey. Now, what if they're already a client? So how can you continue to meet the need for certainty with the client is constantly reminding them what you're all about in your gym or what they get every single time they come to the gym. Hey, get ready to come in. You're going to break a huge sweat today or make sure that you come with your sneakers on because we're going to be going for a run today. What little ways can you constantly drip the ability to meet the need for certainty with your clients? Meeting the need for certainty helps make sure they eliminate fear and remove that you know uneasy feeling of what the heck am I walking into? Now, what about uncertainty? So maybe it sounds a little counterintuitive, but people also have the need for uncertainty right? What if you knew every single thing that was going to happen every single day? It would probably be kind of boring. So people have the need to stir the pot a little bit, you know, put themselves in an uncertain situation to get their blood pressure up and make sure that they're meeting that, you know, energetic need that we all have. How can you also, while meeting the need for certainty and safety, keep things a little bit spicy with some variety? While you meet the need for certainty, you can also make a point to change things up and to keep surprises in the mix so that people don't always know everything that they're walking into. So this could be a surprise warm up that you do. This could be a surprise, you know, finisher or movement selection that you do in the gym, or even just like a really nice thing that you do for a client. So keep in mind that people don't want to walk into the same thing every single day over and over and over. And they want to have some sort of variety in the way they do business. Up next is significance. This is one that you can go really far into. Now it's important to note, significance is somewhat of a shallow need. So people that are incredibly driven by significance usually are kind of like the people who don't like to be around. They're the people that are all about social media. They All they care about is their image. All they care about is aesthetics and what the world sees of them. While it is somewhat of a shallow need, and if that's all you care about, you know those might not be the people you want in your gym. Maybe they are. It all depends on the type of gym that you have. You should be working to meet the need for significance in your gym. And there's a lot of ways that you can do this. One is just knowing their name and using it often. There's very rarely a time that it should be acceptable that a client walks through your doors without saying their name and being excited for them to show up. So using their name often is going to be an incredible way to generate the need for significance because how often do people get celebrated when they walk through the door in their lives? It's probably not at home. It's probably not at work. This is one of the only places that you can give this gift to a client. Next, photos and videos and highlights. How do you celebrate the clients or accomplishments that they have in the gym but even just for showing up in the first place. So how are you meeting the need for significance to say, hey, you just hit a PR today, let's grab a selfie video or a selfie photo. We're gonna blast on our social media and talk about how awesome that you've been doing. All right, that is a way to meet the need for significance and status in your little ecosystem of your gym. You can post it in your internal, maybe Facebook or community group and publicly, depending on the person's willingness to share, you know, photos and videos of their personal story, making sure that you're tapping into that need for significance internally and externally so that they feel significant in the gym community that you're creating. So to take it to the next level of, you know, depth in the human psychology is love and connection. So how can you generate a little bit more love and connection in your community? So this is where you take significance and you go a little bit further with meaning and purpose and intention. This could be not just knowing the person's name when they walk through the door, but it could be knowing the name of their spouse, their kids, or the things that they're really passionate about and making a point to talk about that on a regular basis. So when a client walks in, you're asking them about their kids, you're remembering things from a long time ago that they've told you, and you're genuinely showing a sense of connection and love and appreciation for who they are 
as a human and not what they do in the gym. So think of it like this. Significance is going to be more about accomplishments and shallow behaviors that you may see in the gym, like PRs and milestones and things that they do. Love and connection is a genuine appreciation for who they are. Are. And it's an appreciation for just showing up in the world, reminding them that it's not about what they do, but it is just about who they are. So how can you connect with them on a deeper level is talking about things that are more meaningful to them, their kids, their spouse, maybe things that they're really passionate about, and maybe even gift giving that goes above and beyond what they might expect from a personal trainer or a gym. So we've done some really significant moments in gifts for clients. One of them is we choose a man and woman of the year every year in our program. And the way we do that is we choose one person that not just has done significant things in the gym, but who is an incredible individual that lifts everybody else up, that embodies everything that we have as our core values for our community. And what we do is we source video messages from all of their friends in the gym, their spouse, their kids, people that are significant in their lives. We get a a huge community project around this and we create a big presentation at our annual event and we sit them in front of the room and we play this video and we give them a gift to celebrate them being the man and woman of the year. So obviously this is one really big thing that taps into something incredibly loving and shows a deep level of connection with the individual, but there's also smaller ways that you can do this with meaningful gifts, with meaningful and intentional conversation, and also with things like the member of the month, which is another tactic that we use. Now, every single month, we choose one person that deserves to be shown some love and shown a level of connection. We have all of our staff and some other members send a video in about how much they mean to them and and why they're deserving of being nominated the member of the month. We have our video guy, Matt Simmons, edit all of it up and uh, makes a beautiful video and a tribute to our members. So not only is this great to meet that need for love and connection, but it's also great for our marketing because they typically share it out and their friends comment, and it's just a nice thing for a gym to do for an individual. So how do you tap that need for love and connection? You can go above and beyond with gift giving. You can be very intentional with your communication and really care about the way that you're talking to your clients. And you can do those big shock and awe moments like the man and woman of the year or the member of the month. Next, the need for growth. So again, this is inherent to just running a fitness program in general, but there's also another layer to this. So one thing that CrossFit gyms do incredibly well is there's always another level to be striving for. So we're not a CrossFit gym. I don't, you know, we don't do CrossFit programming. One thing that they do incredibly well is you join a CrossFit gym and your whole goal is to get through on-ramp or whatever they call it. And it's to just participate in a CrossFit workout. And then once you can do that, you're probably doing the, the scaled weights and your goal is to do the regular weights, the, the prescription, the RX program, whatever they call it. They got all these language words that they use. And then your next goal is to maybe make the leaderboard in some of these sessions right? Maybe do really well on some of the workouts and and be the best in the class. And once you start hitting the leaderboard, your next goal is to maybe do the the local gym competition. You start competing in the sport of CrossFit. Once you get really good at that, maybe you do the local, you know, town or regional competition and you try to do the games competitions. And then there's multiple, multiple layers to your competing in the CrossFit games on TV. And it's a way that they create an, an ascension model in their program that constantly meets the need for growth in their clients. So no matter what type of programming you run or what type of training that you offer, there's a million different ways that you can approach this. You can make it a thing where there are certain levels of exercise that clients can unlock. So maybe they start with body weight only and you make it a thing where they have to unlock using the dumbbells or kettlebells. And maybe then they have to unlock use of the barbell. That's one way to cultivate a level of growth to meet that need in your program. So what we do in my gym is we have our level up system. We don't wanna make it ability driven because not all of our clients will ever do barbell front squats or barbell cleans because they're just, you know, maybe they're a 75 year old client and it's not conducive to their goals or what they even want. So for us, it has more to do with just showing up and being a part of our community. So we created an Ascension model where every single day they show up, when they sign up to our scheduling system, 
they get awarded four points. And every time they unlock a certain level of points, they get leveled up in our program. It's almost like our version of a martial arts belt system where 500 points gets them on the board and we do a big announcement every month for who leveled up in the previous month. The next level is at 1500 points. We do another really big announcement every month for the people that have leveled up. And at every level, there's a colored wristband, a sticker, and a special gift that they can unlock at every single level. This is our version of an Ascension model that continues to meet the need for growth in the gym outside of just the weight that is being lost or the body fat percentage or the muscle being gained. Like this just turns that need for growth into just an absolute superpower. Think about how you can apply an Ascension model, whether it's through ability and weights lifted or abilities unlocked or It's through status and appreciation and acknowledgement of just the fact that they're showing up day in and day out and being a member of your community. So that's how you can create that human need for growth in your fitness program. And finally, one of the most significant needs that you can meet in your gym is the need for contribution. So this is the need to feel like you are doing better things for the world or that you are contributing to the greater good. So I'll tell you, I had a really powerful moment about seven or eight years ago. I was invited to come speak to the local Lions Club. So the Lions Club is one of these fraternity groups where adults meet every month and they go grab lunch, you know, at a country club or something. And they talk about charitable events that they can run for the community. And they usually bring in a speaker and they they make plans for the next big event that they're running. And they brought me in as a speaker. And I did a whole thing about getting in shape after your 50s because this was an older crowd. And I was just blown away by the fact that these people who all had full-time jobs and families and probably really busy lives, there's about 80 people in this group that made a point every single month and they were incredibly loyal and serious about the fact that they wanted to do good for the community. And they all carve time out of their busy lives to eat this shitty country club turkey sandwich lunch to make these plans. And it really illustrated the fact that we have a deep need for contribution and feeling like we are contributing to the greater good. So I took that lesson that I learned from that and I brought it back to my community. And we made it a staple in my gym that every month we would contribute to the greater good via either a volunteer event, a fundraiser, or something internally that we will do for our community to help our clients feel the need for contribution. Then not only has it helped our clients feel more bought in and feel like they're bigger than something than just a gym because they feel like being a part of this gym is contributing to the greater good. But it's also done a hell of a lot of good for our local community where every year we raise tens of thousands of dollars for local organizations. We put in dozens of hours of man hours to park cleanups and helping with local charitable organizations. Two sides of the same coin, both lead to better retention in your gym and better vibes around the community that will lead to higher qualified leads coming in the door that people that want to be a part of something really good. So how can you meet the need for contribution? So what can you do with the platform that you've built of your clients that make no mistake about it, probably have disposable income that they want to contribute to charity? And how can you use that platform to meet the need for contribution at a bigger level? And the most amazing thing about these six human needs, if you can adapt them and build them into your program, it'll supercharge your retention, but even better, it'll supercharge your marketing and the way you show up in the marketplace. Because if you can meet three or more needs on a regular basis in your gym, it will become an addiction to your clients that they will not shut up about and they will never want to leave. (laughs) 